sick of people at ESPN or Sports Center who think they have their heads on their shoulders but really don't. Well, it's time for the G and the K Sports Show. We're going to give you the most urgent sports news. Now, it's time for the G and the K Sports Show. Sit back, buckle up, and get ready for the number one sports show on the web. Here we go, my sports friends. How are y'all doing this Tuesday evening? I'm your host each and every Tuesday, Jimmy the K. Hope you've had a blessed week. And things are getting off and back to normal. Not really. It's almost Christmas time, so there is no normal, right? Probably everyone's shopping like crazy. I've got almost all line done. Thank goodness. All right. To sports news, we got lots of sports news. We're going to go to the NFL uh, college football first. Then we'll go to uh, Major League Baseball, which has a plethora of a deals that are going on right now and as we go from there we'll uh, discuss other things from the blog and the website sounds good to me sounds good to you sounds good to everybody all right we're going to start off with the nfl power rankings remember each and every week i give you the power rankings then go through and give you my rankings so the rankings in the NFL and my rankings are never the same. Just like college football. College football rankings and my rankings are never the same. There's always a discrepancy or two in there. So how it looks. Number one, I'll agree, is Carolina. Number two, Arizona. Number three, Cincinnati. Four, Denver. Five, New England. Six, Seattle. Seven, Green Bay. Pittsburgh, eight. Kansas City 9, New York Jets 10, Minnesota 11, 12, Buffalo, Houston 13, 14, Tampa Bay 15, Atlanta 16, Indianapolis 17, Oakland 18, Washington, Philadelphia 19, New York 20, the Giants that is, 21, Chicago 22, Detroit Dallas 23, how they're 23, I don't know. 24, Miami, 25, New Orleans, 26, San Francisco, 27, Tennessee, St. Louis, 28, Jacksonville, 29, Baltimore, 30, 31, San Diego, and 32 is the Cleveland Browns. That's the NFL power rankings. My rankings would look as follows. I'd have Carolina definitely number one. I would flip-flop Arizona and Cincinnati. So Cincinnati would be two. Number three would be Arizona. Number four would stay Denver. Number five would stay New England. Seattle would stay six. Green Bay would get jumped by Pittsburgh. Then you'd have Green Bay, Kansas City, Minnesota, New York Jets. Buffalo and Houston, Atlanta and Tampa Bay. Then you'd have Indianapolis, Oakland, Philadelphia, Washington, New York Giants, Chicago, Detroit, Miami 23, Dallas 24, New Orleans 25, San Francisco 26, 27, Tennessee, 28, St. Louis, Baltimore 29, 30, Jacksonville. Then you have San Diego 31, and 32 would stay with the Cleveland Browns and Johnny Manziel, who, you know, is the biggest uh, disappointment in the NFL. The biggest disappointment in the NFL. And speculation is that Jerry Jones wants to go after Johnny Manziel in the offseason. Biggest mistake uh, the Cowboys could make. Johnny Manziel in a Cowboys uniform is not going to uh, usurp Tony Romo. He'll just end up being a curse just like Brandon Whedon and uh, Matt Castle has been. More of a burden than a backup quarterback. You know, again, like I stated last week, what the Cowboys need to do going into next season is go after 
a quarterback in the first round, somebody that can uh, be molded into the future quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. I, I brought up Trevon Boykin of TCU. Um, there are others uh, that, that could enter the draft as well. Cowboys need to also draft a running back, one that can block as well. You know, if Henry's available in that first round, then go after Henry from uh, Alabama. But I guarantee you he won't be available once the Cowboys get to that round or to their pick. So what's the next best thing? The next best thing is to draft a quarterback, a quarterback in that first round, a quarterback that can be the uh, the Tony Romo of the future, the future Dallas Cowboy quarterback. All right. Now to the top 25 college football playoff rankings. These are as follows. My four will look the same as – uh, college football rankings because you really can't go against the four. Um, after that, there will be changes and differences, in my opinion. Number one, Clemson. Two, Alabama. Three, Mrs. Michigan State. Four, Oklahoma. Five, Iowa. Stanford. Six, Ohio State. Seven, eight, Notre Dame. Nine, Florida State, North Carolina, 10, 11, TCU, Ole Miss, 12, 13, Northwestern, Michigan, 14, 15, Oregon, Oklahoma State, 16, Baylor, 17, Houston, 18, Florida, 19, 20, LSU, 21, Navy, 22, Utah, 23, Tennessee, 24, Temple, and rounding out the top 25, USC. And again, my top four will look the same as college football's playoff rankings because you really cannot go against that. Number four, Clemson, or number one, Clemson. Number two, Alabama. Number three, Michigan State. Number four, Oklahoma. Followed by Iowa. Then you have Ohio State. I believe Stanford goes seven. Notre Dame remains at eight. Florida State remains at nine. North Carolina at 10, Ole Miss 11, then TCU 12, Northwestern, Michigan 14, Oklahoma State 15, Oregon 16, 18, or 17, Houston, 18, Baylor, 19, Florida, LSU, Navy, Utah, Temple, Tennessee, followed by USC being my top 25. As the power rankings are out, your playoff look as follows. I believe you have uh, Oklahoma versus Clemson in the first round, Alabama against Michigan State the next game, and the winner of Clemson, Oklahoma, will take on the winner of Alabama, Michigan State for the national title. Who do I feel honestly has the best shot at the national title? It's not Clemson. Clemson's been undefeated, don't get me wrong. But Oklahoma has been playing the better football out of everybody since the Texas loss. Since that Texas loss, Oklahoma has played better football. Defensively, you know, you can't say that in a few of the games, but offensively they played as good, if not better, than the top three in that top four ranking. But over the last two or three games, defensively Oklahoma stepped it up. Honestly, I feel Oklahoma has a shot at winning the national title this year. They have the best shot out of anybody as they've continued to prove since that Texas loss that they're out for blood and they mean business. So who wins the national championship? My thoughts are Oklahoma. The odds right now for me are there is about a 40% chance that Oklahoma wins the national title and a 20% chance that Alabama wins about 22% uh, percent chance that Clemson wins and about 18% chance that Michigan State wins. So right now I have the Oklahoma Sooners winning the national title 
just by the way that they played over the last few weeks since losing to the University of Texas. My top 25, along with the college football rankings, uh, most of those schools already have their bowl uh, agenda and are ready to uh, rock and roll from there. All righty. From here, we go to Major League Baseball news. If you're not into Major League Baseball, well, then this is your time to, as I would like to say, scat. Because there's been a plethora of things going on. I can't go to everything. Because things are still ongoing as winter meetings go about. I will probably more than likely do a uh, blog post on the weekend review for the... Uh, Major League Baseball winter meetings, which could be quite lengthy, may or may not be lengthy. We'll wait and see. But we're definitely going to do a post on a recap of the Major League Baseball winter meetings uh, in the next few days, probably uh, Saturday more than likely. So what news has been going around the Major League Baseball winter meetings? Um, I'll get to the breaking that just happened a minute ago. Um, it's come across through a source that I like to use. It's Bleacher Report app. If you go to Google or or, um, or if you have a, an Android or an iPhone, you just uh, look for the app Bleacher Report. You can put in your favorite teams and you get uh, the team stream from there. Um, or you can like them on Twitter, Bleacher Report as well. Like them on Facebook. So, What's been going around Major League Baseball? Apparently, allegedly, apparently and allegedly. Let's use both those words in one. The Angels have been courting that of Justin Upton. They've liked Upton in um, months past, but the um, odds of them landing Upton are slim to none as they've had ongoing conversations with many outfielders, including... Joanna Cespedes and Alex Gordon. Um, with that being said, who do they sign? If they sign, you know, if they sign somebody of a catalyst of uh, Justin Upton or Joanna uh, Cespedes or even uh, Alex Gordon, they look to be right there in the mix with all the other AL West clubs. As again, you know. I basically stated early on after this past season, the way the AL West stacked for the top uh, three spots, that next year the AL West would definitely look like the AL West, uh, the AL East of the past. Um, basically very clumped together, you know, you know, only four or five games separating the, uh, the winner of that division. But with uh, signing somebody of a Cespedes or an opt-in for the Angels, they put themselves in a better position of winning the West as well. Uh, first day of winter meetings went out without a hitch. Uh, Wade Miley was traded. Uh, from the Boston Red Sox. And moves from there. Well... There was rumors going around that the Dodgers had acquired Aroldis Chapman, which is one of the uh, best closers in Major League Baseball, but it ran into a snag. That snag being a Major League Baseball investigation into Chapman and domestic violence. I can't go into this any more than what I have to, but I'll get into it. You know, Major League Baseball and the NFL need to be proactive when it comes to domestic violence. And Major League Baseball, in my opinion, has been proactive as the Chapman's not the only one that they're investigating. There are a couple other players that they are investigating as well for not only domestic violence, but but um, some things that they've done in there. 
the uh, the past, whether it be you know drugs or whatever. PEDs are something that they they're looking into a lot of as well. So with that, what you have is the uh, Reds and the Dodgers still trying to work out a deal. If the deal doesn't go through, the Houston Astros are said to be in the the uh, the fray looking to come in and, and pounce on a deal for Chapman. But right now he's being investigated for domestic violence. And with him being investigated for domestic violence, it basically puts this deal on hold. Now, by putting this deal on hold, it allows more teams to jump into the fray, allows the Reds to talk to more teams as, as this deal is on hold. Well, while the deal is on hold, it also allows the Reds to talk to other clubs. Will this hurt Chapman and that of trying to... be traded or his trade value I don't believe it will hurt him you know as the Astros were said to be interested uh, you had teams like the Yankees which you know was kind of weird were said said to be um, interested as well but the Dodgers are, are that team looking in but this still is on hold until the the um, domestic violence uh, investigation by Major League Baseball and the authorities is done. So this is not a done deal yet. But it's something to keep in mind. All right, the big news that came out last week was that of Zach Grinke signing a contract. Now, I'm not going to go over the whole blog post that I wrote because it's on the website. But I'll eat crow. I, industry leaders and sources amongst Major League Baseball really felt like he would re-sign with the Dodgers for around $34 million. You know, $34 million, well, 32 to 33 and a half million was the, the, the industry leader's predictions. My predictions was that he would definitely resign with the um, Dodgers for around 34 million or so. And, you know, I ate my words on the blog post. You can go back through the website and um, look at the blog post that I wrote about the deal. And, and what the price Grinky uh, market does for the rest of free agency. And we're already seeing that through the Major League Baseball winter meetings right now. Uh, the Diamondbacks signed Zach Grinky, which was a shocker to me. I'll eat crow for uh, the time being. For $34.5 million. So, you know, I ain't crow on where he would sign, but I was right on target, right on par for exactly how much he would sign for. That being said, congratulations, Arizona, and they are in the fray for picking a lot of people to... being in their bullpen. They're on the fringe also of the Chapman. But they're more in Andrew Miller. They've contacted the Yankees about Andrew Miller and a couple other uh, teams as well. The um, Rangers have gotten calls on Sean Tolleson. I'm pretty sure the Diamondbacks have, have made a phone call to them as well and chatted with them at the winter meetings. Something else that happened, which is not a shocker, since the um, owner of the Miami Marlins is a huge fan of Barry Bonds, that Barry Bonds has accepted a hitting um, 
the job as the hitting coach for the Miami Marlins. You know, hopefully he can he can um, he can live up to to the legacy that he once had, the the legacy before the drugs, the legacy before the steroids, because he was he was a good hitter, if not a great hitter, even before he you know popped the PEDs, but. You know, with the uh, Marlins manager or the Marlins owner being so gung ho on him as a player, he's definitely going to fit the, or fill the void there in in um, Miami. So congratulations there, and um, you have. the new hitting coach for the Miami Marlins. Hopefully he'll be able to get Giancarlo Stanton back on track for 40 home runs or so. With that being said, let's go and see what the breaking was. Um, two breaking stories. Uh, that of Ben Zobris. Uh, ben Zobris signs a four-year, $56 million deal, coming out to $14 million a, deal, a year with the uh, Chicago Cubs. And just breaking, wow, the news keeps coming. Just breaking, the Atlanta Braves, have reportedly uh, sent Shelby Miller to the Diamondbacks. Um, the clubs haven't confirmed, so this is not quite confirmed, but this is coming from uh, inside sources at both the Braves and the Diamondbacks. Uh, and Ken Rosenthal. And Buster Olney as well. The deal does not include Pollock, though. So, uh, again, like I said, probably Saturday, I'll go through um, the uh, the breakdown of the winter meetings on a blog post for you here at the uh, All About Sports Zone uh, blog page. And lastly, hopefully this is it, which I doubt it is. This is only day two of four of the winter meeting, so there's probably more to come. The uh, Cubs have reportedly agreed to trade Starling Castro to the New York Yankees. Now, this is uh, from the beat reporter Tim Daniels. Middle infielder Castro has reportedly been traded to the New York Yankees. Uh, it's been agreed upon, but it has yet been finalized. Uh, this is also reported by Joel Sherman of the New York Post. John Hyman of CBS Sports reported that the Cubs will receive Adam Warren and Brendan Ryan in return. Uh, from what Sherman had said in quotes, uh, from what they could tell, Castro to Yankees was contingent on the Cubs getting Zobris. Once A happened, B is falling close behind. Not final yet. It is final. Uh, now, as, as the pieces have, have been agreed upon. That being said, we're going to look at the Houston Astros as well. Uh, there's reports that Melancone, the uh, Pirates closer, is on the Astros target. One of many closers on the Astros target. Uh, 
on the Astros wish list for the closer's target. Um, A.J. Hinch said on first base, and I quote, I see it as an open competition. I don't think there are any gifts in this game when it comes to these jobs. Yeah, I would obviously agree to that. We're going to look at the Atlanta Braves. Uh, we already mentioned that Shelby Lewis is going to the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. See what the Dodgers have in store. Uh, the rumors are going around right now that the uh, – Los Angeles Dodgers are working hard on a trade for Jose Fernandez of the Miami Marlins, but they're trying to get a third team involved to get better pieces um, and get better quality out of the deal as well. Uh, you know, losing Grinky and then trading for Jose Fernandez would not be a bad deal. Uh, as Fernandez has been stated as, you know, by former players in the Miami Marlins organization as saying that he is arrogant, snobby, um, not one to be fun, uh, not fun to be around. So... Just like uh, Marcel Ozuna is also somebody that is on um, target as well. That being said... Johnny Menzel has reportedly been named starter after his two-game benching. We'll see how long that lasts. Probably about a week, and then he'll be back on the bench again. Why? Because he's a bench warmer. Uh, blah, blah. Congratulations to top off the show. I want to send a congratulations out to uh, the Dallas Cowboys tight end, Jason Witten, on his 1,000th catches and uh, he's definitely somebody that people in the sports world cannot trash he's definitely somebody that will not be trashed in the sports world by the media just by the sheer fact that he's somebody that's fun to be around somebody that is uh, very good to interview very easy to talk to not only that but he's a, a down to earth type person and he plays the game well, and he's he, he leaves the, the package of the game on the field, doesn't bring it off the field, and vice versa. So congratulations to Jason Witten as he hits that 1,000 mark. Probably one of the better tight ends since Jay Novacek to play for the Dallas Cowboys. Congratulations to Jason Witten on his 1,000th. With that being said, I am your host, Jimmy the K. Remember, there are always easy ways to get a hold of me. I've added a call to action on the All About Sports Zone Facebook page, so it's very easy to find. You like the facebook.com backslash All About Sports Zone, and then up top you see a, a spot that says Send Message. You send me your sports message there, and I will get to them as soon as possible. Also, you can email me at allaboutsportszone at gmail.com. You can like us on Twitter at JimmyCursey1. And until next Tuesday night, I am your host, the one and the only Jimmy the K. Until next Tuesday, sep or, sep until next Tuesday, December 15th, I'm your host. Jimmy the K, and until next time, peace out.